My name is Richard Kaufman. I am indeed the chairman of the board of Levi Strauss, although I must say that I'm not dressed that way today. I'd like to give you a view uh, from uh, the business community. Levi Strauss cares deeply about energy and climate change, not just because we want to be a good corporate citizen, but because of our business. First, we rely upon an agricultural product, in this case cotton, to make 95% of our product. Uh, extreme weather events in Pakistan have driven up prices of cotton 50 percent since July and 100 percent since the beginning of the year. So we're actually seeing prices that uh, uh, we haven't seen since uh, Levi Strauss himself was around. Climate change puts consumers of agricultural products at risk for crop availability, quality, and pricing. Second, Climate change has a major effect on another part of our supply chain, our manufacturing facilities, which are already feeling the effects of extreme weather. Uh, our products are manufactured in more than 45 countries, many of which in, are in the developing world that are expected to bear the risk of water shortage, such as India or Nicaragua, disease, such as in Cambodia, and flooding and saltwater intrusion, such as in Bangladesh and Vietnam. Third, we care about climate change because of our brand. Levi Strauss, like many other American companies, is the beneficiary of globalization, not only in terms of establishing a global supply network, but in terms of demand for our products. Our biggest growth markets are outside the United States, and in particular, the developing markets of China, India, Russia, and Brazil. Uh, I think we all recognize that Levi Strauss is an American brand. We represent the best of American cultural values, honesty, integrity, hard work, and the pioneer can-do spirit. These values speak to consumers around the world, but to the degree to which consumers see the U.S. as being resistant to the science of climate change and as wasteful of natural resources, our brand is at risk. I think all of us have had the experience that young people in particular around the world care about climate change since it will affect them more than any of us in the room. Fourth, our own people care about our being a leader in environmental stewardship. Like other companies, we're in a constant battle for talent. Great people make great companies. What we do to help make our products more sustainable helps us attract and retain the best people. Uh, when we've done a lifestyle assessment of our products and identify environmental impacts and we work to address them, for example, educating consumers on how to care for their clothes more responsibly, including washing less, or washing cold water, and line drying. We're not only reducing environmental impact, but helping our people feel that their work has meaning. Fifth, we also see commercial opportunity in addressing the challenges of energy and climate change. There are product innovations that offer more environmental benefits that will differentiate us from lower cost commodity suppliers. All companies have to deal with that issue of competing with commodity suppliers. A good example of such products is our recently announced waterless jeans. A single jean uses over 10 gallons of water in its finishing process. The waterless jeans, as its name implies, can save over 90% of this water. Another opportunity for us is energy efficiency. At a single distribution facility, and we have quite a number of them, we could save over $600,000 a year, a 33% savings at this site. The millions of dollars that we could save from energy efficiency, we would be able to reinvest in our business. Our goal as a company is to achieve carbon neutrality by reducing the amount of energy we use and moving to 100% renewable energy. The immediate short-term target is to reduce energy use in our global owned and operated locations by 11% uh, compared to 2007. One of the problems we have in achieving our goal of carbon neutrality is uncertain and stop-start government policy. And this can be measured in a lot of ways, from a, from a failure to enact comprehensive climate and energy legislation to uncertainty about whether there'll be an extension of the grant in lieu of tax credits for renewable energy projects. That limits the amount of renewable energy we'll be able to acquire and the cost of that energy. And in terms of energy efficiency, we could do more, faster, and cheaper with federal legislation that incentivizes utilities to work with us. 
Utilities generally still have the in incentive to sell more electricity rather than invest in energy efficiency. In terms of energy efficiency, there are substantial upfront costs that we must make to invest that are difficult for us to finance. We see that the financing system for renewables and energy efficiency is not up to the task. And while we applaud government policy in supporting more R&D, the emphasis on innovation over deployment make it difficult for us to achieve our objectives by using good enough technology that's available today. Uh, my experience uh, as a renewable energy entrepreneur has taught me a lot about the promise and perils of the business that I hope we can explore in questions and answers. Thank you very much.